Hi there, my name is Michelle, and welcome to our Sell a Story training to develop your content with Generative AI. First, we're going to determine the usage parameters of the Generative AI, where we're going to specifically use the AI, and we're going to focus more on the text that it can generate and the images that it can generate. And in the usage parameters of Generative AI, we're going to, of course, think of the speed and the pace. Using this technology, you're going to determine how fast your projects move along, since you can produce text, drawing, images, or dialogue at an incredible rate. If you have an established brand, theme, style, or aesthetic, just be aware that you're going to spend a little bit more time working with the AI for it to understand your style. But if you're starting from scratch or without a specific identity, then you're going to be able to create a large volume of content very quickly, with less prompting. If you need to work with external partners, Generative AI will be extremely helpful for you to generate quickly all of your vision. Then you're going to be able to preview all of your drawings and your characters uploading to Sell a Story. Once everyone has a better understanding of your goal or your prototypes, it's from there you can expand. And this will lead us to the ultimate goal of Generative AI, which is going to save you time and money in case of urgency. And if you have more time, of course, you can have the benefits of simplicity and iterations if you target a large audience, or just a preview in your creative process in the case of a collaboration. And in this training, we're going to mainly focus on introducing you to the Edge browser, because it allows you to have access very easily to Bing Chat for generative text creation and Image Creator for generative image creation. So we're going to use a Sell a Story project in order to show you all of this. So here we are in a Sell a Story project with a background block for an image and a dialogue block for character lines. Let's take a small story from ancient Greek mythology between Kratos and his mother. Kratos does not know his father, and a messenger, Hermes, is going to give him this information. I've already created characters beforehand, so here's Kratos and the other characters. They're ready, I just need images. So we're choosing a small story from ancient Greek mythology, and it's good with artificial intelligence because this is a subject that is very well documented. So let's go to Bing. We're going to work with the creative mode of Bing Chat in order to make richer dialogue, which will often help you create content, context, poems, and help you think about the story. Here's the precise mode, which allows you to have shorter dialogue. So here's the spot you go to to ask your question, and this is what we're going to call the prompt in Generative AI. So let's use creative mode then. I copy and paste my prompt. I ask for a dialogue between Kratos and his mother Medea. Kratos doesn't know his father, and Medea tells him a messenger just came. The messenger has a message from Kratos' father. And let's see what Bing will propose in creative mode. In creative mode, the response generated will be much longer, so it's going to produce a long, long speech. Of course, we're not going to copy all of that. It's just information, but we immediately see the benefit. It's in the form of a dialogue. And it's really the intended form, so I'm already happy with what it's producing. Now think first about your characters. Your content is not known by the AI. Keep in mind that it's just an inspiration. So having opened Bing as a browser, I can switch to the Sell a Story tab so I can have the dialogue I requested right next to me. Now, of course, the longer the dialogue is, the more chances there are for the generative AI to be a little bit incoherent as it goes along because it doesn't know exactly your story. It can't know exactly what you want. So the more text you ask for, maybe the less relatable it's going to be with what you want to do. But for example, on Sell a Story, it can inspire your creativity. In the generated text, the ancient city of Corinth is mentioned, and you might not have thought that. So simply, I'm going to choose, since I've created characters beforehand, the one called Medea. So I will take her line open on the right. And then I'm going to go to another character, it's Kratos. I just have to select Kratos. He replies, my father. And there you go. And I don't forget to save my project. The creative mode is still very useful. I prefer to only take advantage of it at the beginning because it gives me a good creative narrative assistant. Zeus is mentioned as the father, for example. So with the next mode, the precise mode, the dialogues will be much shorter. 
So I will reprompt asking Bing to work next to sell a story. I copy and paste my prompt here, and I put myself in precise mode. And don't forget you have a character limit in your prompt and in the response of your prompt. And there you go. I don't really have any, so actually it's useful for dialogue, and it's only useful for dialogue. On the other hand, in terms of story coherence, we can see it has better results. So let's create another dialogue block. And as you can see, this is a good habit to name the different blocks you use. And in this one, the precise mode. And in the other one, the creative mode. And so that's what we can use with generative AI text. So now we're going to enrich all of this with our generative AI imaging. In Bing Chat, you can also ask for image generation. But for this example, let's switch in a new Edge browser for an option to be more clear. So here we have Image Creator, and you can immediately see it's asking all of these different elements in order to exactly, precisely recreate the style that you're looking for. You can't use a prompt that's too long. And also, you have 15 usage boosts, so you basically, you can make 15 images. To recharge them, you have the possibility, so you can either wait or you can get Microsoft Reward by completing games and forms. So I'm going to paste my prompt, still in our idea of making a story in ancient Greece. So for a scene, I want a young man dressed in ancient Greek clothes with his older mother. And we are picturing the scene there in a house, again of ancient Greek style. And there you go. Images are generated, and I've lost a boost. If you regenerate, it won't exactly be the same characters, the same woman, the same scene. It can get complicated with the generative AI. So I strongly advise you to work with the backgrounds on one hand and the characters on the other hand. Let's go to the prompt again with only the mother of Kratos in color and quite realistic. And here we see the result. She even has a veil on her head. And as I've not specified anything else, I do not have a full size character. I only have a face. So as I'm in the chatbot format, this suits me all right for now. I'm going to take this one, so I'm going to download it, and I'm going to upload it then on Salastory in a folder. It's important not to forget to arrange your folders in order to store your creations in the correct folders. Now I want a background. So now I'm going to ask very simply to Bing, I'm going to ask for a kitchen. And I can see four moods, good from a distance, that suits me. And if I click on this one, I can also see it would work well. I think this is the one that's going to go best with our story, so I'm going to download this one. And then I'm going to re-upload to sell a story. And my image is loaded into my background folder. 
and don't forget to save the project again. So far, all that's appeared has been the dialogue because I haven't uploaded my images yet. So don't make the same mistake as me. I'm going to check in the module settings what the appearance is. So I'm going to set it to chatbot. I save, and it should, in theory, be good. However, it looks like I forgot to assign my little characters to their images. But now I have my antique background, and my dialogues have appeared. So let's assign Medea to its image. Then, if you need to do any changes, you can modify the files with a photo editing software. And there she appears. And so here is the traditional chatbot format simulating the texts. So now what I want to do is switching over to the other format closer to the visual novel, also called interactive comics. Let's switch characters for this new example. So let's ask for Hermes, the messenger. Because as I want the full size character, not just a head, and I'll have to cut out the rest of the image. So having it all white makes it easier for any editing I want to do. So we're gonna start the creation of the images. So let's see, I wasn't exactly precise enough for what I had in mind. But let's click on a couple of the images and we'll look at the different elements. So here I have a couple different gods. I didn't specify in color, so I ended up with a very stiff Greek god statue. I could redo the prompt if I wanted. However, I like this one because it's one of the most lively characters, so that's the one I'm going to go with. And here we are. Another boost was consumed. And it's also important to specify the style because here we want, I have a realistic photo. And if there I have a less realistic photo, they're not going to look great together. So it could be a bit odd, but this is for demonstration, so I'm not going to be so worried about it. But think about this when you're doing full projects in order to have that full sense of continuity throughout. So if I want to play it directly on a visual novel, it's too big. I'm going to have to re-edit my files. And with less staging in the chatbot format, we potentially have much less work to do. So there, I'm going to cut out this character thanks to the magic of the pause button. And we can resume the training right after. And there we have it. Our new Hermes has appeared here, and I'm going to load it into Cello Story. It's very important to keep it in the PNG format in order to keep the transparency in the image. Now let's switch the first dialog from Kratos to Hermes to make my image appear faster. So we can see in chatbot format and we see the transparency. My character is still too big. For full size character mode, 
let's just reduce the size of the image. And there you go, I've shrunk Hermes and now I'm going to load my smaller Hermes, again keeping it in the PNG format. And here we see the result. Well, that's it for this training. We've seen how to use AI in order to generate your interactive content and make it a digital experience with Sell a Story. So you're ready to get started on your project, co-piloted by the Bing chat in order to work on your story dialogues or be inspired for your story background, an image creator in order to generate super fast background and characters. I hope you've enjoyed the Sell a Story training. Don't forget to come back for more videos. Good luck on your project.